Hi folks, and welcome to my allotment garden. This is gonna be my first garden tour in months and months. I think the last one was actually in September and all winter I've been working away. I've had my head down doing absolutely so much to change my plot and today I'm so excited to just have a wander around the garden with you and show you how it's looking at the start of April. If you don't know me, my name is JB. I'm gardening here on a full, one full size allotment down here on the south coast near Portsmouth. Ah, <sighs> there is a smile on my face. I'm feeling very content. The main thing that I've done this winter is put in these beds. This all used to be just in the ground and for four years I've gardened on this plot and oh, <laughs> Putting in these beds has made probably the biggest difference to just how it looks. These aren't really going to be raised beds. You can see they're not super high, they're not super thick, but it's more just for the edge. It gives it a definition to the bed. You can see this one has been mulched quite nicely with horse manure, but it's still quite raw, so it's going to be a little while until we can grow in there. Generally speaking, this is the most tidy the plot has looked in so, so, so long. I've got a little bit of wire mesh here that needs a home, but for, mo for the most part, all of the beds are empty, but they're mostly prepped and mostly ready for me to start growing in. So if you're a bit of a new gardener, maybe you've got an allotment, and you know, I used to worry about this all the time. Around the start of April, often on the south coast, especially March starts to really warm up. And if my beds are empty, I'm kind of thinking, where is everything? Why haven't I got anything in the ground? But it's still very, very, very early in the season. One thing I do have behind me here is my brassica beds. These have gone over. Now they are normally netted, but as soon as winter arrives, the pigeons descend once you take the netting off. One interesting thing is that they don't actually tend to go for these purple spraying broccoli heads, which I've been harvesting absolutely kilos of purple spraying broccoli one of my favorite things to grow and for some reason it does seem to love my allotment always does really well we've got five plants here a few sprout plants i left just to see what they would do here a volunteer aquilegia flower which is a real oddity i don't really know how it got here but it's been there for years and we we always get a few flowers so i like to leave it these broccoli now are ready for cutting down. You normally have to get a saw out to go through the absolutely gigantic stems and then they go in the composter. I've got my honk composter here and this has unfortunately really slowed down over winter. Let's have a little look in here. I recently mowed the allotment, gave it a good stream. So all of that grass is now in there kind of cooking down and it is warm. There is some heat in there. Keeping a hot composting bay at temperature over winter is a real challenge just because there's not half as much material as there is in spring and summer where everything is growing and you've got lots and lots that you can feed the compost with. I've got behind me another bed that's sort of just about ready to grow in. I've just given this a mulch with well-rotted horse manure. It's a bit gappy, but it's got loads of cardboard on to suppress the weeds. It's a little bit of a no-dig bed. I'm gonna go through that mulch to plant when I'm a bit ready. We've got down here next to one of my greenhouses, one of two greenhouses, don't you know? Uh, I call this one the little side bed. Um, and I used to have strawberries in here, but they weren't doing very well. So we've got a bit of a blank slate and I don't actually have a plan for this one just yet. Most of these beds, I do have a rough plan. I've used a bit of software called Veg Plotter. I've got a discount code and you can kind of check that out, make a little free design. If you're interested, link in the description. But let's have a little look in the greenhouses. And there's not too much going on in here. And I have been thinking about maybe reconfiguring it a little bit. I used to have it kind of half paved and then half is ground. It's like a bed that I could grow tomatoes in there and cucumbers. And it did pretty well last season. At the moment, it's a bit of a storage zone because my shed is an absolute horror show. <laughs> I mentioned I've been growing here for four years and this shed is just about <laughs> the only original thing left on the plot. And when I took it on four years ago, it was already kind of condemned and beyond repair. And let me actually, I've had a few questions recently about my shed. <laughs> So let me just show you inside. The door actually no longer works. So this is the mechanism for keeping it shut. <laughs> A massive breeze block leaned against it. 
And let me just put my light on. This thing really is falling apart. There's quite a bit of stuff in the corner there, lots of weed matting. There's a, a mower that I do store in here. There's a few bits and bobs, but generally, because this is so, you know, not watertight and just horrible, really, not much gets stored in here. And in fact, the floor is completely falling through. I don't want to push too hard, but I know if I stamped on this, there would be a massive hole in the floor. <laughs> and down here, I'm gonna show you actually, let me move some bits. You can see down there, a little bit of daylight and the entire floor is just slowly collapsing. Like I say, it's beyond repair. This thing needs knocking down and I'm pretty sure my next winter project is gonna be rebuilding that thing. But speaking of winter projects, this year's winter project has been rebuilding this greenhouse, which is now kind of like my pride and joy. The issue with it is that I just put this on a sleeper base. Often with greenhouses, you get an aluminium base that kind of goes onto the frame but this was completely free. I found this on Facebook Marketplace, same as this one. Both of them came without bases. It's very common if you're looking on kind of free sites, they don't come with a base. So I had to build some out of sleepers, but they were just sat on the soil. Bit of a rookie error. I thought they were gonna last a lot longer than they did, but after just two years, they were rotting through. Maybe should have got some, some superior sleepers, but I've rebuilt it now, given them a good treatment with bitumen coating, you know, really, heavy duty stuff and they're on a course of bricks as well to make sure that they don't go too wet. This is just, like I say, oh, pride and joy. The real star of the show here is the new staging that I've purchased. This is from Copa Grey and they've got a seed shelf here. This is four foot with five shelves, just so much space for sewing. And then over on this side, I've got the kind of double staging. So this is six foot of staging, just perfect storage for seed cells, pots for a bit later on in the season for some of my crops like chili peppers, space for compost, seeds, fertilizer amendments and tools. If you're interested in getting some really nice greenhouse staging, I'll leave a link to Copa Gray's store in the description below. And with my code, you can get 10% off as well. It is fantastic stuff and I'm so pleased I got it. And I've got over here a few of my chili peppers, which I dared to bring out. They're doing really, really well though. We've got really, really like incredibly warm spring on the south coast here at the moment. Overnight temperatures of around 10 degrees Celsius, which is what you want for chili peppers and ideally tomatoes. They're looking not exactly in fine feta. You can see some of them a little bit wilted, a little bit, um, a little bit sad, to be honest, but some of them, like this champion chili pepper, oh, looking so, so, so healthy. And they're gonna have a little bit of an adjustment period. They've only been in the greenhouse a few, a few days, a few nights. Regular subscribers and patrons might realize I've actually given this a little bit of a rearrangement. Oh, there's a friendly fox going by. <laughs> That's a young one. Um, I've actually put this on the back. This is the south facing part of the greenhouse. So these trays will get way more light, but we've got some interesting activity up here. I've got my tomatoes. These were sown unheated greenhouse 15th of March. A few just popping up. We've got a rose crush and a pero, a few of the spoon tomatoes, but still not much germination, but that's not a big surprise. Tomatoes do need quite a bit of heat. Best practice is definitely to germinate these at home, but I've just run out of <laughs> run out of space at home, so I'm doing them in the unheated greenhouse. A second tray of tomatoes, and I've made a bit of an error here. A slight over sowing of black strawberry tomatoes, <laughs> which have come up incredibly strong. That was saved seed, and I wasn't sure if it was gonna be viable, but they're gonna need pricking out. We do have a few others just starting though. This one, a Brad's Atomic Grape has just poked out, and one of my other favorites, this one, the black moon. I'm eagerly awaiting more of these starting to pop up and I am like, come on, come on, where are you? But it teaches you patience. Next to the tomatoes, we have very, very exciting movement. My first sweet peas have just started germinating, both some of the Chelsea collection and the old fashioned at the back. I did unfortunately leave the propagating dome on here just a little bit too long, I think, and we've got a few that have probably damped off where the humidity has been way too high. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but I caught it. 
I caught it just in time. Under here, we've got a few aubergines, but not much else. A lot of these are heat loving crops similar to the tomatoes, sunflowers, aubergines, chili peppers, ground cherry. So I've just got to be a little bit more patient for those as well. One thing that hasn't done very well here, down here is my spring onions. Just not sure why they're not wanting to come up, but once again, have a little bit more patience before maybe re sowing them. Here we have a flower tray and there's some real activity on that one at the back, which is a Celine, I think, or a Seleni or something like that. We've got the first Oxide Daisies, I think. I hope, unless they're a few little weeds, but I don't think they are. Next to those, the salad tray. Look at these, the salad and iceberg lettuce really starting to pop off. Got some meat on those now. A few more flowers here. We've got cosmos, scabious, wormwood, nasturtiums. And then at the front, three rows of things which haven't germinated, despite me doing two sowings in here. So I'm not sure, they're probably just dud seeds, but one of those things, not worth losing any sleep over. Under here, oh, this is exciting. I hadn't seen these, these tiny little ones. These are basil, just starting to pop. And we've got a few dill as well. This is all herbs. So no chives just yet. Or is that, is that a chive that's fallen over? I thought it was just a blade of grass. Let me give that a little. Yeah, that's definitely just a blade of grass. <laughs> Probably blown in during the streaming or something like that. Next to those, a few peas just starting. This is delicate. I think they're a sugar snap. We've got some sweet williams just starting to germinate. The first one there. None of my giant winter leeks or wild marjoram just yet. A few beetroot. These have been really, really slow for germinating for me this year for some reason. I'm not sure if the seed is a, a little bit old or something like that. Cut and come again salad tray at the back there. That is a gourmet loose leaf mix that it's called, which is very exciting. And then last but not least, down here I've got a little pot of calendula. And every year I collect the, the seeds of the pot marigolds that grow. And uh, I just bung them into a little container and then chuck them all into something like this, really big container, and then just prick them out a little bit later on in the season. One of my favorite flowers for the plot. There is just nothing quite like spending a little bit of time looking over your seedlings, a little bit of proper time going through them. Some of the germination this year has been a little bit iffy, but that's just because I've been using a lot of old seed. Nothing to worry about if that happens. Just got to get some fresh seed and go again. Loads and loads more that I could be sowing around this time of year and I'll be starting that this week. I'm very, very excited. This entire greenhouse now is just like a a wonderful place to spend time. One of the things I took really great care to do was getting the floor really, really level. So this is all reclaimed paving slabs that I got for free, but I did buy in some gravel, which I spread on a membrane to get a really, really nice level surface. And it's just such a pleasure, this greenhouse. Now, I, I just love it. I will link a playlist in the description. You can see a quite protracted, quite prolonged build or rebuild of this. You can also see this one being built if you want. <laughs> Some very, very long running series because both of them were absolute pigs, to be honest. But um, once they're done, oh, it's all worth it. Let's wander on down to the polytunnel. It was actually not that long ago that I was given this kind of plot extension. I suppose the absolute best case scenario would be that they give me this plot behind my plot. Obviously, if I could have this one that's just joined, it would be amazing. You can see it's a little overgrown. So for three years, I had that half plot that we've just been on. Uh, it, it included this actually, which is a little area with an apple tree, a cherry tree, some little spring bulbs that are very recently planted. And this little apple tree is just coming into bud. Look at this. I planted this one, this is a Lord Lamborn. I think I planted this one in the winter of 2022, I wanna say, but it's just a little baby. But I do love being able to kind of prune and shape this as it goes. It's really gone off in quite a direction. So next winter I'll be pruning it, but I wonder if this year might be the first one that we finally get an apple from this. I say finally, it's not been that long and I wasn't expecting a harvest too soon. I said just now that the shed was one of the only things that I inherited from the plot, but actually this apple tree too. I think this one is a discovery. It is a bit big for an allotment, but other than that, it does give a delicious tasting 
apple, a very early fruiting one, kind of ripens in right in September. I do tend to have a lot of pest issues though, and like I say, it's a little bit big, but it is wonderful to have on the plot. And this one is a cherry of some kind, I believe an ornamental. Its branches kind of wave and wiggle, and it looks amazing. It tends to just, well, I've never seen an actual cherry on here. I'm not sure if it doesn't fruit or if they just get eaten by the birds, but I leave it for all the blossom. Oh, which is just, look at this. It is just so close. And in just a week or so, all this tree will be filled with the sound of kind of buzzing bees. And I absolutely adore it. I'm not 100% sure what all of the bulbs are. These were a bit of a mix and they were planted by some helpers that I had on the allotment. But oh, look back there, this is so exciting. Extremely lucky to have one of the snake's head fritillaries come out. I just spotted this the other day. And these can take years when you plant them to finally emerge. Sometimes they don't emerge at all. Just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous flower. The wild tulips are really nice. And this one looks like a little bit of a fiery one that I think is about to pop. This is really one of my favorite areas in summer. I quite often in the heat of the day in summer end up pulling up a chair and just sitting in the shade of the cherry tree. It's a very, very welcome relief. Just along from there, we've got the sweet pea frame, my most recently completed project. And there's a little bit of activity in front of it, the wheelbarrow and some chairs. This is going to be a little seating area next to the sweet peas. It's very windy at the moment though, and I don't want the chairs flying over the plot or into the polytunnel, but I cannot wait to see this kind of festooned with sweet pea flowers. It just puts such a smile on my face imagining it. I've still got to actually fill the bed, but really nice space to start working with. Loads of cardboard to kill off all of the grass and the weeds underneath so that I can fill that with some compost. I have done a huge amount of work just recently on preparing the beds on this plot as well, which are proper raised beds. So those other ones were just little kind of border beds, whereas these, you can see, I've got a series of scaffolding boards. They're left over from the building project. I'm gonna do a few more at some point, but you can see these are proper chunky beds and I wanted to raise up the soil level. This one is still covered and it's the last one. I have as well just wood chipped, all of this path today, put down a load of cardboard so we can have a nice kind of easy maintenance next to the polytunnel. You can see there where a fox put a hole in the polytunnel. We've got some rhubarb, which is actually really far behind compared to a lot of other rhubarb that I'm seeing, but very exciting. I forced this last year with a, uh, a big Dalek composter. So this year I'm gonna let it do its thing naturally and then maybe next year give it another force. Once again, just giving this a really big mulch with wood chip just to tidy it up between the beds. This one needs a little bit of work going through and just weeding some of this cooch grass, but a lovely mulch on here before winter of well-rotted manure. So it should be nice and easy to weed and it shouldn't take too long. Over here, this is such a nice section. This was a full no dig section with pallet collars, which were on this plot and they're still going strong. They'll need replacing soon enough, but they're all ready to go as are these three new beds. I've got some carrots just planted in there, covered over, and I am so, so pleased with these. If you've been gardening for a while, you'll kind of understand the excitement of freshly, like freshly manicured beds, you know, these have just been prepped, just been raked over, ready for direct sowing, ready for accepting transplants, and oh, it just fills me with so much excitement for the upcoming season. I'm so pleased with these. They were kind of covered over winter, and they've had a load of horse manure, some well rotted, some fresh, so hopefully we'll have a really successful growing year. Last year, the growing year on here was very, very unsuccessful. And I put that down to a lack of the soil depth, which is why we've got these big proper raised beds in here where I'm gonna aim to build the soil up right up to the, the kind of top of the beds there. Allotments wouldn't really be allotments without uh, what I like to call working areas little bits of kind of dumping ground. So we've got a few plum trees at the back here, which have been really diseased. Actually, I've never had any plums off here, but they too are just coming in to blossom. Really wonderful to see. But back here, it does have to be said, it's a little bit of a dumping ground. It's not very well organized in terms of weed maintenance. And in spring, this is all gonna shoot up. We've got a little pile of wood there for burning, big pile of cardboard at the back there for making no dig beds. 
burning paraphernalia. A, a used bathtub, which does come in handy for potting up, but um, just one of those things that you kind of accept on allotments. You're gonna have a few little working areas. These beds, pretty much ready to go. The one at the back there needs a little weed, but these were all fresh, no dig last year. And these were for flowers last year and they did really, really nicely. These have come back, which I'm really pleased about actually. These gooseberry bushes, they didn't do much last year at all. Didn't really see any fruit, but once again, they might've just been had by the birds before I could find them. One of them looked really poorly, the one at the end there, but it's come back quite nicely. And this, oh, this path is just one of those little jobs that I've wanted to do for such a long time, but getting it done really does tidy up the plot. Let's have a little look in the polytunnel. In fact, just before we go into the polytunnel, I just wanted to mention down here, I mean, there's another little pile of stuff that needs to find a home, some chicken wire and netting and that kind of thing. But down here, there is a little grapevine and it looked really, really poorly last year. So I didn't want to dig it up and stress it out or, you know, put it through too much turmoil. I was interested to see if it would come back this year and it's just starting to come into bud. And I've been flirting with the idea, just thinking about it, little idea in the back of my mind about maybe trying to dig this up and move it inside the polytunnel at some point. There was a little bit of talk about, you know, maybe building the polytunnel actually on top of the grapevine which is just down there. But I decided to put it where it is because it, well, with all the other constraints, it just really made sense for it to go there. But let's have a little look. There's a few more things growing in here. It is a working space as well. So there's a lot of stuff everywhere. Rubbish bags. Oh, these onions are looking really good. They are really ready to be planted out. These were sown from seed on Boxing Day this year. So they're pretty old now. They did have a little bit of a tough life. I dropped a bag of <laughs> a bag of beans on them at one point, <laughs> the coffee beans that were coming up for the compost, but they're looking really healthy. This was a failed experiment that it sat on here. Looks a bit funky, doesn't it? This was an attempt at an in-ground hotbed. So in here, there's loads of horse manure, which unfortunately I failed to get cooking. The idea was to get that to a really good temperature and then start to grow lots of early crops, but a bit of a failed experiment, but just one of those things you move on learn a lesson, I'll try it next year a little bit higher. Over here, this is just all of the compost bags that used to cover the beds over winter. Really, really useful resource. If you don't wanna spend loads of money on weed matting, you can just use compost bags, but you do need lots to weigh them down. Oh, a few things in the ground. Oh, it just fills me with joy. I've always struggled a little bit with direct sowing crops and getting things going outside in the beds because of weed pressure more often than anything. But it's been fantastic to start these in the cover of the polytunnel where it's a lot warmer, a lot milder. They germinate a lot quicker and I've been really on the weeds in here. So I've just got some rocket germinating and some radish next to that. A failed sowing in the middle there, but that's fine. Once again, like I say, just using old seed. And then over here, a few kind of patchy bits of lettuce. These boards are just down for me to stand on when I want to water the potato tubs, which I planted, oh, maybe about five days ago, I think. So no sign of the potato leaves poking out of the soil just yet, but a really interesting experiment. I'll link that in the description as well. If you want to have a look at what I'm up to with my potatoes, a few leeks over here in the ground. These were planted over winter, looking really good. I'm a little bit worried about these going to bolt, but they're not going to see just yet, unlike these <laughs> massive cabbage, which look impressive. Once again, these were an over winter one, but unfortunately it started to get too warm in here now. So they've started to go to seed and set up flower stalks. I will very soon be harvesting all of these for just greens to eat, so they won't go to waste. But the other side of the polytunnel, while I've got a bed on one side, the other side is gonna remain kind of covered. I've got a weed membrane down there and I'm gonna be using lots of this kind of stuff. This is an auto pot setup. So this is a reservoir you fill with water. These are little bases or trays that you sit your pots in and they kind of, oh, I did them last year and they were just absolutely incredible. Back there, I've got a little chili grow I'm gonna be testing. Here's some garlic in pots. These can probably go outside of the polytunnel soon. Looking pretty good though. This is just supermarket garlic. Generally, you're not meant to grow, but oh, sometimes I like to give it a little, a little chance and see how it does. I suffer from onion white rot in the ground outside. So this is about the only way I can grow garlic. And then above that, I put in a floating shelf just this year. 
And this was before I had the greenhouse going. So this was a real lifesaver because I was still working on the greenhouse and couldn't get any sowings going. But we've got a few brassicas looking really good. Ethiopian kale, golden acre cabbage, mini coal cabbage as well looking quite strong. <laughs> this one, this is a little uh, onion. <laughs> <laughs> it's not meant to be in here. These are gutter sown peas and look at them go. They're all just starting to pop. An absolutely wonderful sight, absolutely amazing. But up here they're safe from mice and other pests. So once they're established, they can go out pretty soon. They're quite hardy. So these are a bit far behind. I've seen lots of people planting out their peas, you know, weeks ago, but I'm a bit behind on everything because of the greenhouse project, but it's fine. Everything will catch up. You know, you can start a growing season, you can take on allotment in May and still get some really nice harvest. So you don't need to panic too much. These mussel bra leeks looking pretty healthy, maybe a little on the small side, but nothing to worry about, I don't think. They'll get there eventually. And then last but not least, look at these broad beans. Look at these broad beans, they are incredible. I love the strength that you get in these. One of those big seeds really grows with vigor. You know, they jump out of the seed and go, yes, let's go. Oh, just fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Spending a bit of time. The plot is looking probably the nicest. It's looked really nicely strimmed. Pretty much all the beds are there. We've got some nice seedlings on the go in the greenhouse. A few things just starting in the ground. I do want to get lots more going in the ground. Beetroot, parsnips, that kind of thing some hanging basket strawberries I want to get on the go. There's a little trough back here, actually. Forgot to show you that one because it's a little bit tricky to get to, as you can see from the camera angle. But they're all going to be split and go into hanging baskets on here very soon, where they're going to be safe from the birds and other pests. I really hope you've enjoyed joining me on this garden tour, a little wander through. Oh, I love this time of year. It is absolutely wonderful. Thank you ever so much for joining me. An extra special thank you to all of my patrons who helped me in the garden especially my Chili Puppeteer patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, Andrew, Sarah, Angela, and Dorcasaur, new Chili Puppeteer patron. Hopefully, I'll see you again in the next one, folks.